Hey guys, Dave here, DMAT Castings on the YouTube in the garage as usual. <laughs> um, okay, this this round we're gonna start looking at getting this stuff ready to assemble onto the onto the front and actually put it on, hopefully for the last time. Um, before I can actually put all that on, I've got to do some stuff with some rubber strips and shit like that. So I'll explain it in a sec. We'll just have a little intro thing and then we'll get to it, okay? See you there. Okay, so here's all these bits that we painted in the last round. Um, if you didn't see that video, go and have a look. A little bit orange peely on my kind of shiny sides or my flat sides, but first time spraying a 2K kind of aiming for a good finish, if you know what I mean. So other than epoxies and primers, I've only done a couple of little things. I actually did talk to my brother-in-law yesterday. I did paint one of his cars, a 51 Chev four-door actually, with a satin 2K and we got orange peel in that too. So I, I shot it for him, he prepped it, and I had a crack at painting that stuff, and we ended up um, we ended up thinning it down a bit, I think, from memory. I was confirming with him yesterday, and he was saying, yeah, we did knock it back to get it to lay out nicer. So I have to keep that in mind, either that, or it's still my gun settings or something like that. But anywho, I'm happy with them as they are. But in the process of prepping all these things up, there's certain areas like up on here and there's you know down all down this side here and a bit in there they had all these staple holes and because I didn't pull this car apart I didn't really know what they were for so I've been doing a little bit of research and it turns out that it's a um, kind of felt anti-squeak strip stuff that goes in there and I thought well I've got a rubber kit with the car you know and I'll go through that and pull it out. I actually didn't get a rubber kit with the car, I got parts of a rubber kit with the car, so the, none of that stuff was in there. So what I've been and done is I went down to the local, well not the local one, the local one didn't have any, but I had to go out to, you know, about 40 minutes drive away, <laughs> half an hour's drive sort of thing, and I found this, which is what I'm going to use for my anti-squeak strip, and I bought some of this as well, thinking it might be good for another spot, but I have since found it'll be good for another another spot, like a third, second spot, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I've got to glue all that on, cut it and glue it and all that kind of stuff before I can bolt up all the front end, all the front inner sheet metal and the core support and stuff. And But I'm still waiting on my clips that I have ordered for that and um, they're in transit apparently between here and Auckland so hopefully they'll arrive in the next day or so so I can get all this together and then we can move on to some more sanding and stuff yeah I've been using well, I did a couple of a little test piece here just on a bit of scrap steel kind of mimic what I was trying to do because I don't have a industrial stapler that I can punch through the steel and this stuff with so I'm going to glue it on and I had some of this 3M weather strip and gasket adhesive that I've had for years and the tube was brand new and still good so um, with a bit of experimenting I got this to stick but it wouldn't stick straight off the roll basically I had to sand the insides of the rubber kind of like doing a punch up here on an old bicycle if you know what I'm saying so let's, let's, I'll show you what we're going to do I'll get set up. Okay, so, like, what was I going to say? This stuff here is not exactly, I think, what I'm supposed to be using for this particular thing, but, like, you know, if I was doing a factory restoration, nut and bolt restoration, it would, I'd be trying to track down some reproduction or new old stock of 
the correct stuff, but I'm not doing that as you've probably figured out, you know, so I'm going to find something that kind of works, so hopefully this works. Um, my scissors, my shears, on these, all these panels, like there's a few spots I found, like that have, have this anti-squeak strip on there, and I think it's just to stop the metal on metal rubbing type of scenario. Um, and I found on, I can't remember what forum, it was like a Chev Talk forum, um, some chap on there had been asking about it, and another chap who'd just been through it all, all this kind of rubber sections and stuff, had posted up some really kind of quite comprehensive diagrams of where all this stuff goes and how it's affixed to said sheet metal. So I've got them on my phone, if I remember, I'll put them into the edit on this video just so you can see what this chap done. Sorry, I can't credit his name because I can't remember what it was. And, but yeah, the credit of this kind of where it all goes, goes to him. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be doing it my way with this stuff that I bought locally. And I know you could probably send away for it to steel rubber or whatever, but I don't want to wait that long. It's like, just bridge too far, you know? So, cut me one of them. And that's going to get glued on around there. But what I might have to do is kind of relieve it for those holes. You know what I'm saying? Before I do that, I'm going to sand it. Got me some sandpaper, just some 80 grit, nice and coarse, so give it a good key to stick to and um, try and figure out how to sand it nicely. It'll be a more less awkward way of doing this than what I'm trying to do, but Alright, so that's going to go on there like that. I right, managed to get the holes in the right spot on that side, so that's all good. I think that's how it needs to be on, on that particular bit. Um, could always kind of trim it out any excess if necessary. So now I've just got to glue that on. And this, this fast drying glue, it says you've got to put it on both both pieces and then let it tacky up and then you kind of stick it on so we'll have a crack at doing that it's going to be kind of awkward i reckon but I'll give it a shot anyway this is weird stuff this So I've got these like freaky little clothes pegs that the missus bought a while ago. I thought I'd snag some of those to kind of peg all this on so it can dry. Okay, hopefully this works. <laughs> quite a lot of farting around for it to not work, so alright, grab the next piece I reckon. Really could do have been a little bit longer. I was trying to get it more kind of about an inch in Depth, but that was the widest stuff I could find, you know, locally So yeah, go and put that aside get the next piece. Okay, so the next one is Just a couple of straight while curve and then a kick down here 
Um, so it's got to follow this all the way around and then it does that 90 right there. So I'm saying? And then it's got a little short length that goes on there. So I might actually cut a little short length first. So I don't forget. There's my little shorty. It's shorty. Dip it deep. It's shorty. Dip it deep. I'm not quite sure how well it's going to go around this corner, but I might have to do some little reliefs in it or something. Not sure yet. I'll figure that out when we get that far. Start with sanding it. Okay, same process. Got to sand all the inside. My pencil gone. Cutting a little 90 out of there. So I can get around that corner hopefully. Like this. Some little reliefs in there, something like that, just to help me get around that curve. Ah, oh. ah, oh. ah, oh. damn it. <laughs> Oh well, start again. Okay, take two. <laughs> Try not, I might use the knife to cut those reliefs in there actually this time, but good if I didn't have to, but that will, that will pucker if I don't. Oh, I've got to sand this too, don't I? Jeez. That's it. <laughs> That's how you do it without breaking it. Now I've got to try and get glue all the way in there. This is the hard part actually. The glue doesn't really want to sit on everything. It pulls and goes up stringy and shit. So we'll try. Okay, so first part down on one of these panels, um, which is just a pretty straight run. I'll go through and I'll trim out these these holes once this is cured up a bit. Doesn't take all that long. It's got like a 24-hour cure, um, but like it's kind of holding after about half an hour, so I can then go and trim those bits out and and you know. So the bolts don't get tangled up in it and it gives me my adjustment back and stuff if you know what i mean um so i gotta do a strip right across the top and i gotta do these little foam ones across the bottom which i'll show you in a minute but if you've been paying attention you may have noticed i've changed glues i've switched over to this 
Sally's shoe fix. It's a rubber rubber glue sort of thing because I was having a shit of a time with that 3M stuff. It was just gooping. I couldn't get even coverage and stuff like that. It is an old tube, so it could be just too old, you know. Um, even though it was unused, is an old tube. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I've yeah, kind of like shit canned that for now. And I've gone to this other stuff and I used it a little bit on one of the other pits and it seems to be working pretty good. So I'll carry on with that, um, do this top bit and then do this foam bit. I'm going to check back in in a, in a minute. Bad. This is what I'm using here. It's an energy seals quality EPDM rubber quality stuff. Um, 4 mil wide by 15 mil in height. There, yeah, this is about this is about twenty bucks or something from the local hardware. It's some kind of door or window seal, um, but yeah, it seems to be working. Hopefully, we won't really know one hundred percent until we um, bolt this mamma jammer up into the car, I guess. And the other one I'm using I've already got, is a same brand, but it's a twenty by twenty by five foam it's got self adhesive as well but I'm using the glue or I will be using the glue okay yeah all right so that's that all marked what I've got to trim out of there to avoid all the holes and stuff like that. So I set about doing some trimmaging. You know, can I see that? Just a little, little trim. Alright, here's my blue. Like so that, so I'm running it on the edge, this is my logic, running it on the edge and then when I squirt some into the rubber strip, I now squeeze the strip, it kind of spreads onto the strip and then when I push it on there, it pushes it more across, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully it works. I'm just going to flip this over and glue the other side without getting covered in it. Some in here, squeeze it in, and then kind of pinch that together to spread it around, and hope it don't take too long and have it glue itself together. Otherwise, I've got to make this again. That's my plan, anyway. Oh, I missed a hole there. I think I have. That's all right, I'll trim that up. Didn't cut that. The other side of that hole. All done. Alright, what side does this go again? Alrighty, so that's that one all pegged up and taped up. Well, not taped, what do you call it? Like edged. Just gotta go around and kind of push these down as that kind of cures up a little bit and hopefully they'll stick, at least stick enough that it'll hold them on there. Once it's all bolted together, it should all just stay on. Right, get my battery on to charge. I'll show you the next step. Okay, this battery isn't very charged either. Backup battery. Um, so next up, I've got to do that kind of L-shaped foam 
on the underside of that. So I'll just flip this thing over. Yep. Oh, it's a bit thin on the old black on the underside of there, but you're right. Cut my pieces. One of that there. Just that one. And three. See what's going on. Just trim that. No, not quite. This, that one, that one, and that one. I'll just give them a bit of a coating of this stuff. Like so. And then that on there. Get a bit of a slide around to get some onto there. And then I'll just take it off. Same with that little mamma jamma. Balance that there. Wait a couple minutes for it to tack up, not that much. Good push on there. And that's that. Hopefully they will hold properly and stuff. These ones don't seem to need pegging and that because they're all kind of straight across and kind of a bit easier to do them in that kind of thinner contact adhesive kind of vibe, I guess you want to call it. It's just dust. Okay, so just kind of had a thought. Um, you know, see the smoke coming out? Um, can't do much more with that until that's cured up enough I can trim out those holes which I actually found it did the other side that way I kind of did the clamping and then trimmed out the holes still got clamps across the top um, so that's all the rubbers and that that have to be you know there were anti squeak strips or whatever that have to be glued on to that shit um, my plan is to start bolting all that onto the front of the 51 the old area 51 old flatty mcflat flats making an appearance again but um my clips haven't arrived yet according to the tracking data they are still in transit between auckland and tauranga which they have been in transit since the 27th it's now the 29th so it doesn't doesn't really surprise me they're probably sitting in a depot somewhere and just haven't been scanned in yet and you know courier's got to have holidays and stuff too but yeah um i suppose i can bolt up the core support part since that's my first step anyway so i might just do that and then probably call it for today until i can get my clips because i kind of need all them because they've got to go um some have got to go on the front there and there and stuff some of them go on not that stuff, but um, some of the other small stone guardy things, I think. I can't remember. It's going to be a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle kind of piece. And, you know, I don't need that many. I've got a hundred coming. <laughs> I probably only need about six. But, um, yeah. I'll be able to use them all on, because I'm probably going to have to use a lot on that front end, which is buried under those boxes, all the grill and 
all that stuff when I pull that apart I'll probably be replacing all the crypt clips and that in there too because some of them are pretty crunchy and missing as well so yeah I suppose we'll um, bolt this core support up figure that out got all my scavenger's got all my nuts and bolts for all of this stuff out of the uh, back room the other day the only thing I'm not really liking is these cardboard shims so I'm thinking I might make me a couple of rubber ones you know we've got the rubbers that go in there anyway that goes under the core support I think and then that comes up from underneath and these shims are to you know shim it up higher or lower or whatever uh, that's what was holding it in there but we have a proper um, bolts spring washers and nuts for that in here so yeah core support radiator and horn kit oh, so that's the horn stuff probably maybe I don't know and those I can't remember what they were for but probably something to do with this you know so I might just make me a couple of new ones of these because I mean if these get wet they're just going to turn to mush and they're going to be up against you know steel and that I'd rather have some rubber ones so come hither I have some rubber that I could use in here I'd use that piece that's an off cut so that's about the same thickness and uh, it's not too won't be any spongier than than that cardboard for shims eh? oh not quite so yeah I'm gonna make me a couple of these and then we should be ready to bolt that in just trace around these ones that'll be fine might not even use them you know but if I don't put enough get enough height in the front apparently you can have trouble with the old doors connecting with the guards which won't be uh, ideal Slightly different sizes, that could just be discrepancies in these die cuts or whatever, but it'll do us. both of these shims in from put them in that way so I should be able to nah, I'll put them in that way I reckon just bolt up from under here or well, the nuts go on under here like so I think I'm gonna pull it right forward on this because it's slotted to start with always move it all back to see just pinch them up for now and uh, yeah I know it's a bit dry across there actually my with my spray painting that was when I was trying to paint overhead um, yeah so that's that's that next up clips wait for my clips to arrive and then I can start putting this other stuff on I guess 
Okay, hey guys, so next day, um, I, all of this will be nice and dry now, so um, I can de-peg my glued on bits and bobs um, and start bolting all this up. My clips haven't arrived yet from China, <laughs> this well, from Auckland, but so I went down to the local hardware and bought some speed clips these were old stock they had in a little box out the back so that was quite good and it turns out i only actually need four to do what i'm doing today um, most of the clips i need are for the like i said before was for the grill thing which i'm pointing over there because it's that's the grill buried up under there um so been sorting out the nuts and bolts and crap like that to bolt all this up and we've got that core support on but before I go too much further i'll de-peg these pieces and trim out those holes i think that's all i have to do on those and they're ready to go these are all that glue's holding on they're good goodish guru guru and uh yeah then we'll start putting this together it's raining again today so i'll probably have to get old flatty flat flat up and kind of roll the old area 51 back now that it's on the ground and i can get in here and start bolting this stuff up rather than move that stuff sideways i could always do that move that stuff sideways but quite heavy those boxes yeah so i'll just get my shit together and we'll be right back just take these off just like so nice and easy it's quite good little pegs for that sort of thing but I really like them much for hanging out the washing. And a little trim, trim. How far does that go? Where did that cut? Alrighty, so got all my nuts and bolts and stuff that I think I need for for this. Um, I guess we'll start putting it bolting this on. This piece here just goes up on on there like so. Um, I can't remember whether I need to bolt that other bit on first. I think I might do actually. Hold on a sec. Okay, so realized i have made a mistake with my painting i was supposed to stone guard that this side because <laughs> that's what kind of the stones are going to hit so i'll probably might end up pulling these back off these two pieces off each side a little later on um when i'm doing like the inner guards like the inside of the guards for the front sheet metal and stuff um yeah because when i i didn't actually check this when i was prepping this up to paint i just looked at the condition it was in and this side was actually quite smooth and in quite good condition on these pieces and the other side was all pitted and crappy and stuff so i just assumed in my weird logic that that was because um you know the pitted crappy side was the side that was getting all the kind of road stuff over the years but it was actually probably just from crap sitting up behind it but anywho that's all right we, we can either leave it see how they hold up pull them off down the track somewhere if they start and get a bit kind of scody looking and treat them all up then or like i was saying when i do the front guards which are over there you might not be able to see them because the hood's up on the old truck um i might just do the stone guard and repaint them then but it's only one, two, three, six, six bolts to undo to take them out again. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But we'll, uh, yeah, 
start bolting this up, I reckon. Alright, so this just takes... Goes in like... Oh, have I done this the wrong way? That's got to go like that. That can go there. Just loosely. Give me one of them. And that goes on. Right under there. Need another one of those. Just leave them all loose until we've got all the this bottom brace in down here. Might grab a light. There's something I just noticed. See the old brake lines running down low, and this is this this piece here is gonna rub on it, which I don't want. So I can reshape that brake line up into that little divot there, or just or I can bend back that return just a, a touch I should stop waving the light around so you can see what I'm on about so I could just bend that up a little bit or reshape that brake line either either maybe a bit of both but then the brake line won't look straight ish Yeah, that didn't really work that nicely. We'll rejig that brake line as well, I think. That should do us. Okay, back where I was just a few short minutes ago. Now, what am I doing? I've got to put that in there. I'm trying to knock this camera off now goes in there and this brace goes across the bottom of these two panels and it ties into the uh, this chassis rail here like that see and then chuck one in down the end here started like that So I just got to tighten everything up and then we are uh, moving on to the next bit of the puzzle. Okay, so now I have a recollection way back when I did the um, roof certs on the kind of covers for the shock, top of the shock sort of thing, that there was one that um, wouldn't screw in properly. So I've just got to go and check the threads on, on them just to make sure that... Um, they're all clear, and it was one of the backside ones, so it'd be one of one of these two, either on that one or on the other panel, which is over there. So I'll just quickly clear the threads on those. 
um, make sure that they're all good to go while the access is easier. Okay, so Rivnet threads cleared. Pretty sure it was the very first one I went to clear because that one was a bit tight, which was that one there, because all the others were just like clean, easy. There was that one I think I might have munted up the Rivnet a little bit when I was putting it in somehow or when I was trying to maybe cross thread it a little bit when I was you know doing the thing putting the thing on when I was building it and stuff um, but should be good now um, so I got both sides to this point um, with that inner guard thing on there got my nice shiny glossy black thing there that's gonna get all beat to shit with stones and that this bit here too will be as well actually It'll be all exposed to gravel rash and shit so maybe Maybe when it's all together, I'll mask it off and do that on the car. Maybe, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I don't really want shiny, you know, clean paint on the inner, inside of the guards because it'll just get all chipped up and sort of wrecked. But I'm not going to be doing, you know, gravel rallies and things like that. So <laughs> it might be all right. So I need my clips, actually. I need to put these on. Just better check these actually that they do fit. Mm, she's a bit, she didn't want to go. My, give it a bit of a wake up. Cut. All right, she'll go. She, she's good. Let's do the rest of those. I only need four in this situation. It goes on on there, one of them, like that. Push it on, scratch all the paint, twist. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, getting off track. Oh, does it line up? Might be right. <laughs> um, yeah, those speed clips were just a little, a little snug on the imperial kind of screws. Um, so I just kind of opened them up by forcing a screw through them. So that should be good to go now. And I've got some shears. Put them in my little clips drawer. Save them for later. Um, yeah, what else are we gonna do? I'll figure out what I need. Oh, do I need to put the other bracket on first? I think I might need to get me these ones. These two. I think these need to go on before I go too much further. Then okay, once my rattle can specials. Got quite a nice gloss on those, but yeah, pretty pissed and scoty, but that's all right. Um, so there you go. I've got to figure out which is which. Uh, no, I think. They go like that. So will they go on first or second? They might go on second actually. Mm, I might put the inner fender thing in before I kind of put that on there. Know what I'm saying? So I'll just put them over there safely. So what do I need then? Five of these for each side. Oh, five? Yeah, five of those, I think. You can always get more. Um, need two of those for up the front. And then two for up the back. I might be missing some washers in that, actually. What have we got there? That one. Yeah, two of those up the front on each side, two of those up the front. And then we've got these that haven't got, got one spring washer. I might have to do a bit of a look around, figure out what I actually need spring washers on and flat washers on and stuff like that. I'm not really too sure to be here. Um, can always change them around, you know. Yeah, I'll so put these over there. I've already put five over there for that side. And then we can go 
put those five over this side here. So we know where they are. Are they going to get... I don't know. That's not a good place to put them. We'll just dump them in there. Can't put them here because the, that thing will hit them. Just put them up there. Yep, that's a good bolt holder. What does that leave us then? We've got all those. Can't remember what all those are for. There's a couple of stainless ones that I haven't got washers on. Maybe there's some spears, I don't know. These two, four, maybe two for each side. One's got a spring washer on. I don't know. The kit doesn't really tell you where they're all for, but not a big deal. We'll figure it out and replace what's missing and things like that, I guess. But yeah, anyway, which side should we do first? Which one's that? That one there, we'll start with that one. Okay, so this came out again. Um, I had trouble getting one of those holes started and lined up and stuff, so I ended up taking that back off and just kind of wallowing out the hole a little bit. Not, that sounds harsh than it was. I just drilled it out the next size up so I could get that final um, cap screw in. I think it must have been, probably that was probably the problem I was having all along, maybe. I don't know, I haven't done the other side yet. <laughs> could still be where the problem lies. Um, galled up thread or whatever but yeah the hole wasn't quite lining up so I just opened it up and then I could bolt that little cap on all properly so yeah do the other side okay so one side down um, I have to admit working with this shiny paint is kind of quite stressful because as much as I'm not really into shiny paint now that I've made that stuff shiny I don't want to kind of scratch it and kind of ding it up and whatnot and it's quite humid today, so my the old temperature's kind of coming up somewhat. These things feel way heavier now that they're painted. I don't know, maybe it's just the stress heavy. Now I've got both hands full with this, and I haven't got my, where's my nuts and bolts? I got them yet. I'll just put these up on there. The magnet's holding. Let's do it. My battery died on my little torch thing as well, so. Excuse the darkness. I could set up another light, but I don't want to. Just, just like that. Get one of these going. I'm getting grubby fingerprints all over everything. A bit jammed. Okay, so that's 
frustrating, but I could have get the other one in actually. And the britches keep falling down, my t-shirt keeps riding up. Hopefully not too much ass crackers in this video. Oh, deep shiny paint. Stressful. Is that what not want to do anything? Oh, come on. Now we're talking. Not binding up over here that's causing all of that. Okay, so been been ages trying to figure out nuts and bolts and what goes where and pardon me how these kits work and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of largely makes sense, but then there was stuff I've unpacked, probably not knowing what it was for and probably now in the wrong kind of bags and stuff. But yeah, I was kind of short on a few flat washers for these fender braces um, and the fender brace kit. It's kind of mixed in with the all inner sheet metal kit and I you know used the flat washers up on here and, and whatnot so I stole some flat washers out of another kit and then sh shared them out amongst the missing washer brigade and uh, find out what I've stolen later on when I'm trying to put something else back together but yeah so I'll just organize this and then we'll um, do the uh, what we're we doing next other bits the bits that go on the very front okay right just been going through the old investigation process into these and then i had a memory came back to me that these were actually attached kind of permanently and that's what all those holes were i was trying to figure out what fasteners went in those holes that yeah these ones that run around that lip there and you know, I remember that they were kind of like rivets or spot welds or something. I think they were rivets. Um, whereas I haven't got any. Oh, I'll have to have a look, see if I can find something to replace those with. But in the short term, I, there is a fastener that goes through into there, like a one of those chunky screws so I'll get that screwed on there and then we'll figure out how to attach it the rest of the way yeah okay so let's do it I'll just put this on loosely just to hold it for, for now until I can um, find something to screw those into there or rivet them screws or rivets you might have a look to see what kind of rivet selection I've got. Yep. I thought I might as well do that one. How many do we need? With that being said, we've got one, two, Three, four, five, maybe ten of something. Whether they be little short stubby screws or some kind of rivet. Yeah, rivet. Got any screws. Got any stainless screws or oh, they, they might be alright. Might be a bit small. Hmm. Then we'll have a sharp screw sticking through the other side is the only thing, but give it a try anyway. These things. Yes they are, they're three 116 stainless screws. So I need a screwdriver. Let's see how we go. Funny feeling. I don't know, they might be too small. 
Yeah, too small for there. Too small for the other side as well. Dang nabbit. Oh, and see what else we got. Hmm. Alrighty, so screws didn't work, hot rivets didn't work, didn't work, so rib nuts it is. Let's grill. Okay, all right, all that was surprisingly more difficult than I anticipated, and now I have to kind of repeat the process over that side. But now I kind of know what I'm doing. The old the rib suits are uh, definitely the way to go in this situation. I just didn't have anything else that would do it. Screws and rivets. I tried pop rivets and just ended up scratching shit, and that didn't work. Holes were too big, rivets were too small, that kind of stuff. So it's just easier to drill them out to rib suit size. And I had just enough rib suits, two different kind of colors though. One was gold zinc and one was silver. I don't know what they are, might be aluminium. Don't know. Um, but yeah, so I did the gold, the silver ones at the top and all the gold ones down the bottom and I'll do the same on the other side. But right now I need to charge up a battery. That side actually went a lot easier than that side once I knew what I was doing and doing it had made that decision to do the old rib suit thing. Um, yeah, so made a few scratches and things like that down here with rivet, pop rivet guns and shit. So I'll need to go and kind of give them a little bit of a touch up. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Like I said earlier in this video or late in the last video, like. This has all been bolted up here before. There's no reason why it shouldn't fit this time around. But, you know, I just didn't want to. So, 
This side was all right. Well, apart from that cover, that didn't want to fit. That one was all right. This front piece didn't want to fit. That one was all right. So go figure. But this is the side that had, uh, I think that was the one that had the big rust repair and the, all the work done down here. So good chance I didn't. No, I did test fit it again afterwards, yeah, but I used like kind of self tapper screws to screw it and they would have just forced their way in rather than being a kind of accurate lineup. Um, yeah, a couple of but, but kind of bummed out I've painted the wrong side of those things, but that doesn't really matter. But yeah, things like that happen, and I've just noticed something that I've done months ago um, that I now have to undo uh, <laughs> I was I don't know why but I was looking at this area of the firewall and I thought where's my hole for my accelerator cable and it's gone <laughs> I've, I've welded it up smoothed it out and Gone burger it. Like that was in there and all set up and, and done. I went just went and had a look in from the inside and uh like there's my little pedestal that it, that's my knees that it sits on. And I can't even see where my hole was. Like it might be about there. There's a little little divity thing, see what you see? I can't even see where my hole was. I think I think that's it. it was around about there but I'm gonna have to you know when I come to put that back in drill a new hole in my shiny paint and stuff you know <laughs> what a dipstick um but yeah so I don't I thought I circled everything I must have looked at it and gone no, I don't know what that is I'll just weld it up and yeah, it turns out it's quite important if you want to go faster than idle speed. Um, but yeah, gone. <laughs> oh, I'll have to get used to that. That's going to rip my shins to shreds if I keep trying to walk past here. Um, but yeah, she was around about here somewhere because the cable come out and over and across the top of the intake down to the old throttle body. Yep, no one else spotted that, <laughs> but maybe you guys thought that I was just going to drill a new hole through the new paint anyway, which is what I'm going to have to do, hopefully it's, did I TIG weld all those up? Um, hopefully I did, because that way I'm not trying to drill through a big glob of bloody MIG welded high tensile shit, but yeah, anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I'll be able to get up under the dash with the drill, no worries. Or even, yeah, there was something I wanted to do with that hole actually. I think I was going to move it slightly like up or down just to get the alignment of the cable a bit nicer. So maybe that's what I had in my head and then I just didn't think about it and just welded the whole thing home. So, I don't know, never mind, it's done now. I'll just have to drill a new hole and I'll probably sort of touch up that paintage um, just to sort of seal it up again somehow something like that maybe yeah um we'll put a big rib suit in it with some silicon around it or something <laughs> no, not really just joking but yeah so there we have it that whole process dealing with shiny paint and trying not to mess things up and you put your sweaty gooey sticky handprints all over everything and then the uh it kind of kind of kind of messes with my head, eh? It really does. Um, you know, trying to be real careful and then you drop a tool or you drop a nut or a bolt and it takes a little chip or something like that. I didn't actually have that today, but I did drop something. But anyway, but yeah, just, you know, trying to use things like rubber guns and that where you really should have dealt with all of that before it was painted, but I thought I had, but I hadn't. <laughs> and so... There you have it. Uh, but yeah, on the whole though, I'm pretty happy with this. It's, you know, she's, she's in there. Still got a radiator going there yet. That does. Still have a bit of flex up top there, eh? But is there anything else that holds all this together? 
I can't really remember, but the radiator goes in, that'll sort of firm it all up a bit. There's another piece that I cannot remember where it goes. There's that, that little gravel guard thing up there, and it's a singular piece, I think. Maybe it went in this area somewhere, but I don't know how it was attached. It might have been attached to the old sort of six cylinder setup, not so much needed in this situation maybe um i don't know i can't remember i thought i had that figured out as well but now i can't remember what it does it's that one there have a look i don't know i thought it might go behind behind there you know but i don't think it does so it might come into play with the old when the grill and that goes in or it might just be a redundant piece now that I don't need anymore um, because this might have been you know built around the the old inline six that was in there that little thing if you know what that is let me know where it goes like so there's a couple of you guys that follow the channel that have got 51s and 49s and 50s and things like that um, if you still got one and it's bolted in it's just got four screw holes across the front well, or the back whichever way it goes or the top or the bottom I don't know I'm sure I can get it figured out or maybe I just always thought I'll cross that bridge when I come to it but I'm kind of at that bridge and I still don't know so <laughs> never mind doesn't look like I need it um, but yeah so that's where we're going to leave this one this little project you know basically gluing on some strips and bolting this front sheet metal on has taken me uh, the better part of two days <laughs> um, not full days to be fair they're probably three quarter days what time is it now yeah it's 20 past three now and I've been chipping it away at this since this morning and then you know we had a few hours of doing those bloody rubber strips yesterday and to be honest a lot of mucking around with nuts and bolts and screws and shit trying to figure out what's what um for the final kind of installation and then of course you know mucking around with these end pieces trying to get them to um fit but yeah she's she's all kind of in there now hopefully that a arm is not going to hit that now because i never really retested that after i um did the old what do you call it the um that little repair. Nah, I won't test it off. I'm stressing myself out over it. After I did that little notch out of it, it should be fine now that this is all rigid and stuff. I couldn't really get it to connect when it was all loose. And it's not, it shouldn't connect now. I doubt it anyway. I'd be really surprised if it did. But yeah, check it out. What are some orange peely shiny paint and a dusty motor? And some, some smoother shiny paint, some dry spots on the top of here, and some new scratches. We did well. <laughs> but yeah, like I said before, I'm happy with how it's coming together. Again, even though it's not the best paint finish, it still kind of like stresses me out when I, you know, put a scratch in it and stuff. But I'll get a wee brush out and I'll you know, pencil those in. And um, yeah, next up, I reckon we want to get those... The rest of the sheet metal into epoxy the front guards and the bonnet um, and then possibly smooth them out smooth them out on the stands to a large degree um, and then get them into i don't know because i've got to, if i'm going to paint this color and i want it to kind of flow across they have to be painted on the car but if i paint them on the car i can't get to all of this stuff in here and inside those doors as well as i could from there so now i'm, I'm second guessing my thought process on my timing of everything how i do everything so but i would ideally before i go too nuts like to have it all kind of bolted up and in, in one thing of epoxy even though there's only just a couple of bolts holding the old um, fenders and that on so maybe we can uh, bolt the fenders and the hood on 
and the hood will stay on so maybe dress up the hinges do all that kind of stuff epoxy prime everything paint the underside of the hood do the guards do any kind of metal working that still needs doing hopefully no welding anymore on those maybe maybe a little bit um, and then we can yeah underseal those you know get them all in primer and stuff and then oh, I don't know maybe I don't know maybe just sit them on there but sit them forward so you can get into those door jams I, I don't know we'll figure it out anyway but yeah it, as always thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed hit the button hit the notifications bell all that kind of stuff if you want to get notified on when updates on the old area 51 project or on the bomb truck got a couple of things to do on that coming up um hope, hopefully i just got to get some parts and stuff together um and yeah thanks for watching like share comment subscribe if you haven't done so already i just said that but i'm saying it again some folk have been a bit slow on the uptake on that um but yeah <laughs> as always thanks for watching until next time take it easy and peace